Well, if we're going to dive deep into the world of service profiles, then we first need to understand what a service profile is. And so let's start by defining that and defining how exactly Cisco views what a server is defined as and really ultimately how we came about with this idea of service profiles. Now, if you're working your way through the DC core course, then you might have already watched an earlier skill where we had this exact same conversation. If so, then you're welcome to skip forward into the next video. However, for those who might have missed it or just if you need a refresher, then we wanted to pause for a moment because again, we can't dive deep into service profiles if we just don't even know what they are. So let's first of all, knock this conversation out from a high level perspective, what service profiles are, and then we'll drill into the weeds here later on in the skill. Let's dive in. The concept of what a service profile is comes down to this question of what we define a server as. So what is a server? And Cisco had to answer this question back when they decided to make server products and they came up with a rather unique answer. For example, if most of us were to list out what is a server, we would list things like the motherboard. And we'd probably list out the CPU and the memory and maybe the hard disk drives. Not to mention components such as NICs and fiber channel HBAs. However, if we were viewing it from an applications perspective, what does an application see? Uh, what an application sees besides just a bunch of hardware is it starts to see identity points. When we think about identity points, we think of universally unique identifiers, which are typically burned into the motherboard. We also could have MAC addresses, those are on NICs, and then we can have worldwide names, and those are usually tied to the HBAs. But then we can go a step further and say, okay, what about from an IT perspective? Well, what do we see? Well, when we're configuring a server, we have to worry about things like BIOS settings, as well as firmware settings. Firmware can be a nightmare to manage on a, a server infrastructure. We also have to think about RAID settings and boot settings. So how are we going to configure this server essentially, and how are we going to maintain it over time? Well, Cisco took a look at this and said, you know what, everything to the right of this line, this is really what a server is. It's not how we build servers, we actually need physical hardware, that would be over to the left of the line. So all the hardware's on the left, everything that really defines the identity and the purpose and how we manage and maintain a server is on the right side of the line. Furthermore, all of this can be defined inside of software. As a result, this set right here is what Cisco defines as a service profile. A service profile is a software entity that we define inside of UCS Manager. The service profile is going to include the identity points, basically everything on the left side of this column here, the MAC addresses and the worldwide names and the UIDs. And then we also have the policies, basically everything on the right side. So the BIOS settings and the firmware and the RAID and the boot policies and many, many other policies, by the way, this is not an exhaustive list. So essentially what we have in the UCS world is we're going to spin up a physical set of hardware. We'll call that a physical server. This server, even though it's online and functional, it really can't do anything inside of UCS until it receives a service profile. We place a service profile onto this server, and at that point, this server assumes all of the identity points and all of the policies that we have defined. And this is very important because if we have a NIC inside of this server and it's got its own MAC address, well, we just stamped effectively a service profile down on top of it that's going to provide it with a MAC address. And this will apply to other identity points as well, such as, again, if we've got an HBA from a fiber channel perspective or a motherboard receiving a new UUID. Furthermore, if we've got policies like firmware, what if this piece of hardware has the wrong firmware on it? Well, if we've defined the firmware as part of our service profile, then the service profile will push the correct version of firmware down before it actually loads and boots the server. So as much as possible, we are stamping the intended image, the intended purpose of the server down onto an arbitrary piece of hardware. And that's what's key. The hardware becomes arbitrary. We no longer care what exactly it is. Does it have this NIC? Does it have that HBA? Does it have this firmware policy on it? Does it have this RAID setting? Because we are going to completely overwrite whatever the hardware has and make sure that we are deploying exactly what we want. Now, earlier on in this course, we talked about three different scenarios where this really comes into play. And if you want to see that conversation in more detail, then be sure to go back and watch the skill called Describe UCS Architecture, which is part of this DC Core course. However, just to run through these scenarios, the first would be the idea of expansion. If I'm going to create a, let's say a second server. So I created this server here, the server number one. I'm going to create a very similar server over here, server number two. Well, what if these are going to serve the same purpose? What if these are both going to be hypervisors? I'm going to be deploying them as virtual hosts. Well, chances are all of the policies that I've defined here are going to be the exact same between the two. We just need different MAC addresses and different worldwide names and different identity points. Well, because this is software, I can do one of two things. I can either clone this service profile from one to the other, as long as, again, the identity points aren't cloned, and UCS allows us to do this. 
The other option is to create a template to begin with. And when I have this template, I can use it to create two separate service profiles, not only now, but in the future, I might need two more service profiles. I can come back to this template and create new ones from there. The second scenario is the idea of an outage. If I were to have an outage in my data center today on traditional architecture, I have a server running and all of a sudden the server goes kaput. I call up my vendor and they send me a new physical server and we have to stop and think about everything that just happened because this server, this new server, is going to have new points of identity such as MAC addresses. It's going to have different firmware on it. It's going to have potentially even the wrong BIOS settings in there. And so the question is, do I have time to address all of this? I mean, I can't even address the identity point issue because maybe it was the NIC that went down and so the MAC address is permanently changed. If the application was licensed according to the MAC address, then that's gonna be a major problem when this server comes back online. But the question is, am I going to take the time in an emergency, in an outage scenario, to update the firmware? And this is why it's hard to manage firmware across an infrastructure because things change over time. Ideally, all of our servers are running the same firmware, and this is one place that UCS really helps out. Because now I apply the service profile to the server, and the service profile defines all of this for me. So now I can address the MAC address, I can address the firmware and the BIOS settings. And the last option, which is pretty similar to the outage situation, is going to be the idea of an upgrade. If I were, for example, to run an old piece of hardware over here, and now I'm ready to upgrade this. Let's say these are the old Cisco UCS M4 servers, and I'm ready to upgrade to the M6, going from the fourth generation to the sixth generation UCS server. Well, at this point, I can simply move the service profile that was attached to the M4 server over to the M6, recognizing that there might be some things we need to change, especially in you know if BIOS settings have changed between Intel chipsets and such, then we need to consider that. However, most of what is part of a service profile is going to be able to move to the new generation. So especially the identity points will be able to be moved onto the new hardware and therefore my upgrade is going to be a whole lot more seamless. So as we see here, service profiles, they're just a software definition of what a server is according to what Cisco says it is, which is the identity points and the policies that we're deploying from an IT perspective. Now the service profiles, they do have to get mapped to hardware at some point. We can't just live in the virtual software space forever. And so we take a physical piece of hardware, which is effectively a blank slate, and we stamp down all of these identity points and policies onto the hardware in order to create a fully functional server. Now, lastly, service profiles, we saw the three different uh, situations, the scenarios that really help to streamline and improve our processes where service profiles really can save the day. And those would include expansion, outage, and upgrade scenarios like we talked about. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.